Hello wonderful students. This video is about geologic time and how to tell geologic time using a principle called relative dating. Probably the easiest way that I could explain the idea behind relative dating to you is look at an example of how people have listened to music over the course of the last couple of generations. You start out here with a record and then we move to cassette tapes and then CDs and then I have a first generation iPod here and then a smartphone that does music and a whole bunch of other stuff. So with relative dating you just have a general order. Okay. So if we look at the cassette tape all you know is that people were listening to cassette tapes in between when they were listening to records and CD players. It doesn't tell you the exact year that the cassette tape came out. It doesn't tell you when people stopped listening to cassettes and began listening to their music on CDs. So that's one of the limitations of relative dating. But a lot of the times in geology, um, it's not that important for geologists to know exactly how old something is, but they want to be able to know um, approximately how old it is, or generally how old it is. So, so just to review, in this example of how we've listened to music over the course of the last couple of generations, um, relative dating um, will tell you that before everybody had a smartphone, uh, we listened to our music on uh, iPods. Um, but this will not tell you that the first generation iPod came out in 2001. There's five ways that geologists will relatively date um, rock layers and the stuff that we find in them. The first one is called the law of superposition, which sounds complicated and it's really not. Uh, index fossils, cross-cutting relationships, unconformities, and the principle of uniformitarianism. So we're going to talk about each of those things in this video. All right, uniformitarianism. Um, that's just fun to say. Let's break this down a little bit. Um, first, the root word in uniformitarianism is uniform. And if you think about people that wear uniforms, if you play baseball or you're a nurse or you're a fireman, policeman, um, you're a member of a group and everybody in that group looks the same. In terms of geology, what you're looking at is the stuff around you and it looks the same today as it did a really long time ago. So that's one of the big reasons why some people think that geology is really boring because it's not something that you can observe happening in front of you like if you do a physics experiment. So uniform means the same. The rest of this, the itarianism, means throughout. Throughout. Okay, so it's the same throughout. This is an important statement right here. The present is the key to the past. So what that means is, you know, like I said, um, you look at the way things are right now. You look at processes that are happening right now on Earth. And those same processes have been going on for a really long time. Okay, so uniformitarianism is a geologic proce process that shapes the Earth today, um, and they're the same right now as they were in the past. The guy that gets credit for this idea is Dr. James Hutton, who's considered to be the, the founder of uh, modern geology. Geology wasn't really a science or a thing to study until Dr. Hutton came along. So, got the Grand Canyon right here behind him. We're going to look at that a little bit more um, in class this week, but uh, it's an example of uniformitarianism. We're going to kind of shrink it down in this next slide to look at um, something that is um, a little bit more familiar to you. Okay, more uniformitarianism, please. I know that's what you're saying. So this is a picture of a creek, and many of you have probably seen creeks just like this. So the water is flowing through the middle of this ravine, and you stop you're out taking a hike on a nice spring day, you look around and you see this cliff face over here to the left. Right here is what I'm talking about. Okay, and 
Um, that gives you an idea that the creek has been there for a really long time. Well, how do you know that, Mr. Vaughn? Great question. If you look at these rocks right here, these are all shale on these little outcrops. Okay, shale has a nickname. It's called mudstone. Okay, because that's exactly what makes it. What a great idea to call it mudstone. So, what that tells you is that that creek has been there for a really long time doing what it does to make this shale over here on the left hand side. The river a long time ago was probably all the way up here. Okay, and there was nothing down here at the bottom of the creek bed. But over time, it's eroded to get down to this point, and it's left this cliff face right here. So when the stream or the creek would erode, it would pick up soil and clay and silt and sand and little bits of rock and pebble and stuff, and it would deposit them down here um, at the bottom of the stream bed. Okay, so it would deposit it, it would lay it down. Okay, then um, over the course of time, it would lay another layer down and another, another layer on top of that. Okay, so this is how sedimentary rocks form. Eventually, there's so many layers and the weight is so great that the force and the pressure just push down and it squishes it and it compresses it down into shale. So it might just look like an ordinary creek or an ordinary stream, but uniformitarianism says the present, the things that are happening right now, are a key to understanding uh, what happened a really long time ago. So because you look to your left or your right and you see that the, the sides of the stream where it eroded are made out of shale or mudstone, that tells you that that creek has probably been there doing what it's doing right now in 2015 for thousands or even millions of years. So I think that's pretty cool. Okay, superposition. Superposition is just a fancy way for saying that the bottom layer is the oldest and the youngest layer is um, always going to be on top. So if we put these in order, the f number one would be the oldest layer because it was deposited first. That would be number one. Then this would be deposited, that would be two. Then this one in the middle would be the third oldest, fourth, and then fifth. Okay, so the oldest is always going to be on bottom, and then the youngest is going to be on top because it was the most recently deposited. Index fossils are also really useful to date um, rock layers. Uh, relatively date rock layers. Um, in order to be an index fossil, you have to meet two criteria. You have to be widely distributed, so found in a bunch of places all over the world, and you have to have existed for only a short period of time. Okay, and these are really useful um, because if you look at um, th this fossil over here, for example, this is a dinosaur bone fossil. Well, dinosaur Fossil remains have been found in rocks that are as old as 225 million years um, ago and as recently as 65 million years ago. So if you're digging in rocks and you find a dinosaur bone from any of the different um, geologic periods, you know that it has to be between 225 and 65 million years old. Okay, let's look at an example where we would use index fossils to relatively date rock layers. First, in this diagram, we have four rock columns from four different locations, and they're all labeled on the top. So these would um, not necessarily be places that are right next door to each other. Um, so location one might be in uh, America. Uh, location two might be in Europe. Location 3 might be in Australia, and location 4 might be in Africa. Okay, so let's start out by looking at location number 1. Um, layer A would be the oldest because it's found on bottom. Layer B would be the next oldest, and then C and D. Okay, so every layer is put down, every layer is accounted for. Now if we look at layer, or I'm sorry, location 2... Same thing, okay, you've got layer A, followed by layer B, followed by layer C, okay, but there is no layer D, it's missing, there's a gap in the rock record. So, 
in Europe at location two, some sort of event happened, um, probably pretty recently, that caused um, that material where layer D would have been right here. Okay, layer D probably was deposited and put down, but the material was just eroded away over time. Okay, so there's no layer D at location number two. If we look at location number three, um, layer A is deposited, and then there is nothing else, no B, C, or A. Nothing's deposited um, anytime after layer A is put down. So again, there's some sort of event that took place here in Australia that eroded and took away that, that rock evidence. You know, probably a glacier or some other sort of geologic event that would have eroded the material. If we look at uh, location four in Africa, that's a little bit different than all the others because there is A and then where rock layer B should have been, this layer should be right here, but it's not. There's a, there's a gap. So layer A was put down in Africa, A was put down, and then B was put down and the um, rock layer B was eroded, and then C and D were put down on top of it. So we can use index fossils to relatively date rock layers and the stuff that we find in those rock layers. On the left-hand side here, I'm going to just make something up. I'm going to just, um, for the sake of, of this example, say that um, right here, um, between going from layer B to layer C is 10 million years, and then to go from B to A, that was 30 million years ago, okay? So, you know that everything that you find in this B layer is between 10 and 30 million years old, okay? So, when you go over here to location 4 in Africa, even though there isn't a layer B, you can use layer B to relatively date the ages of these rock layers. Okay, and here's how you would do it. Okay, 30 million years ago is the time that we transitioned from layer A to layer B. So that was right here. Everything beneath where I'm drawing this arrow here has to be older than 30 million years. Everything above it that happened more recently has to be younger than 10, okay, because this is where rock layer B would go. It would go right here, okay, so everything underneath it has to be older than it. Everything above it had to have been deposited and put down more recently. Okay, cross-cutting relationships. Um, Cross-cutting relationships say that a rock is older than anything that cuts across it, or a rock is older than any fracture found within it. Something has to exist before it is cut or broken. Okay, so let me show you an example of what um, this diagram would have looked like in real time. Okay, where it says oldest on the bottom, this would be the oldest layer right here. Okay, oldest layer, because it's on bottom, do a layer on top of that, layer on top of that, and then a layer on top of that. Okay, so how it goes right now is we would have this happen first, second, third, fourth. Okay, now there are these things that could happen and they're called igneous intrusions. And an igneous intrusion is when um, molten rock from um, beneath the layers that are already put down um, inject themselves. Okay, so this would be like a, a magma intrusion. Okay, molten rock that is coming up from underneath and it's cutting across and covering up. And that's what you see in the black and white diagram to the right here. Okay, this is now the youngest. Okay, and you know that it's the youngest because it covers up everything underneath it. It covers up everything beneath it. So, 
all these layers that are put down um, beneath it, they had to be there, they had to exist before they're cut across or broken, okay? So with cross-cutting, whatever is doing the covering or the, uh, or the cutting or the covering up, um, it's younger than whatever it covers up. Okay, let's look at a problem here. I actually got this out of uh, a high school geology workbook, but I think we can do it. Um, I'm going to circle these in the order that they happen. Okay, now to start out with, this is just straight superposition. So I'm going to do um, oldest at the bottom and then youngest at the top. Okay, so the very first thing that happens is layer C. Okay, and then layer B is deposited on top of that, and then layer A is deposited on top of that. One, two, three. Okay, then what happened is D cut across C, B, and A. Okay, E has to be the youngest thing that's happened because E cuts across everything. So everything had to be there in order for E to cut across it or cover it up. Okay, uh, in unconformity, let's look at the root word for this, conform. Okay, if you're conforming, it means that you are following the pattern. Okay, and unconformity means that you do not follow the pattern. So, in geology, when we're looking at what an unconformity is, it's the surface where new rock layers meet a much older rock surface beneath them. It's a gap in the geologic rock record. An unconformity shows where some rock layers have been lost because of erosion. Now, on the photograph to the right, you can kind of see where this happens. You have this sort of um, bent or folded pattern right here with the rock layers. You have the, this. So you have this kind of U shape. Okay, then the pattern is broken um, when the much younger rocks are placed on top. So where I've highlighted in red here, this would be your unconformity. Okay, um, it's a gap in the rock record. The pattern is broken. The pattern does not fit. Let's look at another example. Okay, let's look at how uh, an unconformity would actually happen. Uh, the first picture here is just deposition. Okay, layer A is deposited, and then B is deposited on top of that, and then C and D. Okay, then, you know, maybe there's some tectonic activity where the layers are folded or bent. Okay, so in picture two here, Layer A is still the oldest, and layer D is still the youngest. But now what happens is, because these are no longer uh, flat, you have kind of a, a hill or a slope shape here, um, this is exposed to the elements, to the wind, to the waves, to the water, to the ice, um, and that material is eroded and broken down. So, over the course of time, as you go from one to two, you would go over here to picture three, and then this is your unconformity right here. This is the gap in the rock record. So now this is flat again, and you would have deposition where you would get E being deposited and then F. Okay, so you could see the pattern is broken. There's a gap in the rock record. It doesn't make sense, okay, and that's caused by erosion.